Hello, I'm Doc Eon. Welcome to my first look at Kings of War, 2nd Edition. What is Kings of War? It is a, as it says here, the game of fantasy battles. It's a um, relatively large-scale miniatures war game with a fantasy theme. And I just got this this week. Well, yesterday, actually, in the mail. I, I told you there wouldn't be any more videos this week, but I was wrong. <laughs> I didn't know this would be appearing. This is from the first wave of shipments from the Kickstarter for second edition of this game, in which I received most of the stuff I ordered. Uh, most importantly, it contained the rulebook. It contained uh, two versions of the rulebook. There is the, the, the full rulebook, which is a hardcover, and which is some um, 200 pages. And there's the slightly smaller soft cover, which is only about 80 pages. What's the difference? Well, the so-called gamer's edition has none of the fluff. It has none of the fiction, none of the history of the world of Mantica, none of the, uh, you know, geopolitical background that this main rule book has. What this does have is all the actual rules and the army lists. It is in fact pretty much the same text. It is... they've reformatted it to, to take out a lot of the illustrations as well. And But otherwise it's exactly the same text. Uh, down to having page references that are actually to uh, the big version of the rule book. It says here, explain on page 51. Uh, not in this book, it isn't. It's on page 7. A few mistakes of those kinds were made. But overall, it's uh, well produced. It has, you know, lots of pictures and uh, nice graphical layout. It starts, the main rulebook starts with all the fluff. It has the history of the world for about f uh, yeah, 45 pages before we get to the actual rules. Now, what can I say about the rules themselves? Well, I like them. They are simple but still allow for tactics. Uh, I, I should point out right away, this is a first look because, not a review, because I haven't played the game uh, in the, this form yet, but I think the rules are simple enough that I can, I can make some sort of judgments, well, preliminary judgments based on just reading it. And if I were to summarize my impressions, my first impressions, I would say, with the risk of pissing a lot of people off, I'd say it's Warhammer, but with all the stupid taken out of it. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're familiar with Warhammer Fantasy Battles or 40k, um... I'm I'm an old school war gamer. I uh, well, not not old school in the sense that I that I uh, want everything to be the way it was back in the 70s and 80s, but in that I like rules to make sense. I I don't like a lot of random stuff. I don't like random magic. I don't like random mystical terrain features. I don't like random charge distances. I, in a war game, I like to have things out in the open so that I can take them into account when when uh, when deciding on my moves. I don't want to be at the mercy of the dice. I mean, you're always at the mercy of the dice to a certain extent, but I want to minimize that. I want to have have actual. Um, tactics of the kind that you might apply in real life matter. And to me, this this rule set is better at that. 
because it, as I said, it takes out a lot of the random stupid stuff and leaves in just the basic, uh, basic combat. And magic is not stupidly overpowered. It's just mainly buffs. Or when it does attacks, it's just, you know, kind of like a unit making attacks. Uh, individuals like uh, leaders and wizards and heroes and the like, they're, they have more of a support role. They don't take on usually entire regiments of, of miniatures all on their own. And, and I like that too. Now, um, also, and, and this is important, when it comes to stats and how the game plays, um, we, we have, for example, a typical stat line here. Actually, this is a better example. These are some typical uh, human, just basic soldiers. Um, and in fact, th this can give you also some sort of idea about how many models you need to, to play a game of this. The suggested average game size is 2,000 points, and you can see here that a, a regiment of your basic infantry troops, uh, that is 20 models, is 100 points. So if you were to play a game with nothing but blocks of these guys, the shield wall, you would need 20 regiments, so that would be 400 minis. But, of course, you would never feel that. You would have a lot more special units and, and uh, more costly units, so... I don't know, maybe half of that, maybe a couple hundred uh, models it would be a good sized army. And of course you can play smaller games, there's nothing stopping you from that. Anyway, pardon the digression, I, I, I want to get back to looking at uh, the stat line. And you will see that there's not that much in the way of stats. There's a speed, which is inches of movement, there's the melee, which is the number you need to roll on a d6 to hit. Uh, ranged, which these guys don't have, but it works the same way. Defense, which is what you, an opponent would roll once they'd managed to hit you. They need to beat the defense to actually score damage. Then we have the number of attacks. We have their nerve, which has two numbers, one for wavering and one for routed, and the point cost. Now, to compare this again to, to that other game, um, you'll notice that it has similar um, mechanics in it, in that it has a roll to hit and a roll to damage. The difference being that in this game, there are no chart lookups, because this, this is not the 1980s anymore. We don't design games with stupid rules like chart lookups, okay? Even Games Workshop don't do that anymore. Even they realized in Age of Sigmar that that's a silly way of doing things. Instead, you have everything on the stat line. The to-hit roll is decided only by the melee ability of the attacker, and the damage roll is only decided by the defense stat of the defender. Sure, this is a little bit of an abstraction, but there are there are ways of um, um, modifying this. I mean, you can have special rules. The, mo the most common special rule is something like these guys have, which is crushing strength. If 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 a unit has crushing strength, then it it makes the roll against the opponent's defense easier, so you can penetrate armor easier. Um, Another improvement on that other game is the number of attacks is not directly related to the number of models. It's, it's, you have specific sizes of units, and the number of attacks goes up, but when you go up from a troop of 10 to a regiment of 20, the number of attacks in this case only goes up from 10 to 12. And this is because in, in a realistic um, appraisal of how medieval battle works, more guys means more ranks, which means not everybody's in the front line fighting all the time. So, you know, the amount of force you bring to bear does not increase uh, directly, you know, with the number of guys. What does improve substantially when you get a bigger unit is the ability to absorb damage, which is represented by your nerve, because 
again this game does not have model removal it does not you don't take away single miniatures from a unit when it gets hit thus decreasing your ability to fight because again that's not how it works in real life in real life the unit sticks together it takes some losses but it's still functional up until the point that its nerve breaks and it routes so you keep track of damage towards a unit and increasing damage makes it more and more likely that their nerve will break and there are two like breaking points the first one means that they start to waver a wavering unit is essentially useless but it's still on the board and can be rallied by a leader uh, if it routes if you roll over the second number you just remove the whole unit it just there's no you know running on the map you just it breaks and it's gone which simplifies things quite a lot um, so that's a brief rundown of the rule of the combat rules and of course there are as I as any miniature game has to have there are rules for movements and terrain and uh, there's some movement for how you charge and measure and uh, uh, the turn system now the, the turn f phases are maybe a little bit simplified for my tastes they they're still i go you go that is you know one play does all of their stuff and then the other play does all of their stuff which is a little bit simplistic i prefer games that have a more complex um activation structure but you know i can live with this it's considering how many models you have to keep track of i suppose it is a simplification that is um reasonable for 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 uh, for making it more uh more of a fluid game you know uh rules for shooting melee nerve war engines individuals special rules you can, you can have special abilities and magic and stuff to make things a little bit more interesting you can have magical artifacts and there are uh a few spells and one, two, three, six basic scenarios included. And some variants if you want to play time games, for example. And you have army lists for, let's see how many factions there are. Let's look at the. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven factions so far. And if you've uh, noticed on their website they are beta testing a bunch more factions which they're going to release as a supplement possibly at the end of the year um, now most of these factions they have models for or are making models for in uh, the forces of the abyss and the forces of nature are new and uh, for this edition and the minis are not quite complete yet they were not in wave one of the Kickstarter send out. They'll be in wave two, they say. Um, Kingdoms of Men is not, this is a list they don't have specific minis for. This is a generic list to allow you to use um, any minis you want. You know, you can take any, any human soldier miniatures from any manufacturer and you can fit them into the Kingdoms of Men list if you don't want to play with the miniatures that Mantic produce, which is a nice thing. And and a lot of the new lists they're producing are specifically intended to clone um, factions from a certain well-known other game. So you can still use those minis if you want. Now, I don't think I have much more to say about this game at this point. So maybe it's time for some conclusions. What can I say? Uh, to wrap this up well it, it looks promising i in, in in later years i've mostly played skirmish games it's it's more manageable but you know if i wanted to play a game with the bigger armies this is about as complex as i would want to go i would not want to make play anything 
heavier rules wise than this that's my personal preference and as I mentioned I, I kind of like that they uh, they keep some of the ideas from that other old game but they clean all the ideas up and they they make it their own thing by uh, getting rid of outdated stuff which I feel is is a good thing of course I think that's all I need to say right now so until I see you next time this is Dakian signing off